हमारे एक बात समझ नहीं आ रही है यहाँ एल्यूमिनियम की हंडिया पड़ी थी वहाँ मिर्जा की चप्पलें पड़ी थी यहाँ दो बकरियाँ बांध रखी हैं। साला हमारा ही बल्फ मेरा निकालने के लिए अरे बल्ब ना चोरी हो इतनी गोड़ी जायदाद चोरी हो गई इनकी जायदाद वाली सूरत कहा ट्रेन जाना हो तो मिश्रा जी की फैमिली के साथ जॉइंट टाइल लेकिन हमें पता नहीं था कि आप इतने गरीब हैं। आज से पार्किंग दो पचास रुपया रोज का हम जाओ अपनी बकरियों के साथ बैठो ठीक है और ना ठोक देंगे तुम्हें तुम दे हवेली और हमारे बीच आना ना ऐसा हाल कर देंगे तो हाँ बुलाओ हाल तो तुम्हारा करेंगे हम यूनिवर्सिटी के लौंडे बुला लिए ना जितनी आज की चल रही है हवेली के साथ सब निकाल देंगे पुरानी इंटे ये तो होना ही था एक तो किराया बढ़ाते नहीं हो मकान खाली करते नहीं हो घोगा बन के बैठे हो गले में हमारे लाओ मत अटैक आ जाएगा आपको तो अपना मकान खाली करवाना किराएदार से कागजात लाए हो मीटिंग के लिए के ऐसे आगे उठहलते हुए एक ही ऑप्शन है हवेली भेज दो सरकारी आए आर्कोलॉजी हवेली हमने बेच दी है बेच रहे हो बेच ही नहीं सकते हवेली हमारी जमीन हमारी मर्जी हमारी कैसे नहीं बेच सकते लेकिन परमिशन हमारा लगेगा अब मजा है मोहब्बत करते हैं हम अपनी हवेली से बेनता ऐसा है तुम्हारी कोई औलाद नहीं है हमारा बाप नहीं है कोर्ट कचहरी के चक्कर से निजात पाओगे हमें गोद ले लो कहीं के Exciting! This is, of course, um, the the Indian Film Festival of Melbourne Film Club. We're so excited that we're um, that we're starting this film club with a conversation with with our favorite filmmakers. Mm-hmm. We're chatting, of course, today with Sujit Sarkar and Roni Lahiri. They are no strangers to the festival. Uh, they've been to the IFFM twice. Um, Roni Sujit, uh, of course, Piku in 2015 won Best Director, Best Actor, and Best Film at IFFM. In 2017, Pink won Best Director, so you're no you're no stranger to the festival. Um, this is, of course, these are these are strange, unprecedented, unusual times. So our lead up to the festival is is a little bit different this year. The festival will be in October, hopefully, and uh, we're of course uh, beginning with the film club, and and you know um, we're so excited that that we're beginning with you, who are in a sense alumni of of our uh, of our festival. um we've got a whole bunch of um fans of cinephiles uh, they're tuning in from um australia mostly of course but also from new zealand fiji indonesia and malaysia they're joined so we're really connected with the world and a uh, very appropriate sujit given that um your film um the, the latest one the new one gulabo sitabo drops on friday on amazon prime video which means it goes out to roughly 200 countries so very fitting that um that that all of the cinephiles on the uh, you know on the chat today uh, are are from across um, you know from across so so welcome ronnie welcome shrijit um i'm going to jump in straight and ask you all what's it like you know when it's two days before a new film coming out are there butterflies in the stomach and is it a little bit different this time because the pressure of box office the pressure of opening day opening day numbers opening weekend numbers is not there Yeah, absolutely, uh, Rajiv. You have hit the right point, right spot where we are mostly nervous uh, on the first day, 
uh, is that nobody is going to bother us with the box office numbers, at least me as a director. Um, mm -hmm. So um, I am out of it. But yes, but the excitement and the anxiety uh, is uh, more or less uh, uh, same, I think, because, you know, you put so much uh, you know, effort to make a film and you really want the audience to enjoy every bit, every nuances that you have created. Uh, so, uh, so that anxiety, I'm sure uh, I am carrying it and I hope another few days, uh, to, another two days to go. So I think, let's see. Rani? Yeah, uh, it's strange, as you said, I mean, uh, first time, I mean, we're going straight to digital medium. So actually, we don't know what the pressure is. Uh, honestly speaking, I mean, I'm sure uh, OTT platforms have their pressures when they're dropping in new content. A uh, little bit, I am feeling when uh, the Amazon guys keep on calling me, oh, it's trending, it's not tracking. And so I'm learning, I mean, uh, you see, on a natural scenario, you know that your Friday box office number is what is actually you track all the time. But here, I think it's a different way. I think it's subscription. It is the number of viewers. So we're learning. I mean, it's a good learning. You know, was this to both of you, was this a hard decision to make? You know, one understands that a film is ready. Um, there's a there's a clock that's that's ticking. There is a, a meter, as they say, a, a, a price that's constantly, a, a fee that's mm. going up, a, a cost that's going up. But, but also, um, you know, Shujit, you've spoken about being a lover of films. You grew up going to the cinemas. You grew up in Kolkata going to the movies. Rani, you've spoken about getting into the filmmaking business because you love cinema. Um, was this a hard decision to make? I mean, it, it, it may have been the responsible decision, but was it hard to, to, to take that call? Um, yes, of course, Rajiv. I mean, you know, we, uh, we have, when we started... Um, um, shooting um, Gulabu Sitabu, of course, it was a, a cinema release. Uh, it was a normal cinema uh, uh, release. Uh, and way we have shot it, and especially this particular film, let me tell you, um, I don't know any other, I don't know about the Indian films, but my cinematographer has shot this film uh, completely in a wide lens and uh, on a one single lens, uh, that is a 30 mm prime lens. So you can imagine that we thought of, of a cinematic experience uh, for people to enjoy and for myself also. Uh, so, of course, it was not an easy decision. Um, and uh, you're absolutely right that all this decision comes uh, with the situation around that has happened. And that's why we adapted to the situation and we thought we should move on. And uh, that's what I did. I just took this decision. It, as I said, it's a tough decision. It was. But I think finally we took this decision and we abide by it and we are happy about this decision. And uh, we have now taken the film straight to the people at their home theater. Rani, the benefit, I would assume, I mean, apart from, of course, um, you know, box office, the no, no box office pressure, um, is the fact also that apparently you all are dubbing in, in, in several Indian languages, but also 20 foreign languages. So the film, in a sense, becomes local for, uh, for, for many, many, uh, um, you know, people across the, across the world, across many countries. Uh, let me correct it. I mean, we've not dubbed it because right now that's not an okay. uh, op, uh, option. We've uh, subtitled okay. in 20 different languages. So, Even better, uh, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So that, uh, see, I mean, uh, where it came from was from the Oscar speech of uh, the Parasite director when he said the yeah. one inch of subtitle, if you can, yeah. Yeah. one and a half inch. So we thought that since we are going to 203 countries, let's cover as many uh, uh, languages as possible. So that uh, when somebody is watching the film, it is more local to him. And it actually yeah. came from uh, uh, while discussing with our grader, because we've graded our film in Europe. And when he was grading, we had given him with English subtitle. He was like, uh, I can understand, but uh, if it was in my language, it would have been even more, I would have enjoyed. So yeah. we have uh, subtitled in all these languages. And uh, I shared it with him and he was really happy. He was like, now I can tell my friends, my family who can watch because uh, obviously, in a lot of countries in Europe, uh, English is not the first language which we assume. So they have their own local languages. And so if the subtitling is in that, it really helps. So as you said, you have uh, viewers from Indonesia and all. We've got in Basa, we've got in Malay, we've got in uh, Thai, we've got all these uh, Korean, Japanese, all languages have been covered. So I hope people will enjoy. Right. You know, Shujit, this conversation is meant to be from Vicky Donor to Gulabo Sitabo. This is your 
eighth film, um, seventh release as a director, of course, uh, one film remains, uh, unre remains unreleased and one film is still in, you're still inching towards completion, Uddham Singh. Um, Shijit, you know, one looks at your filmography and what, what is, uh, you know, what strikes you immediately is just the versatility, you know, just how varied a filmography it is. I mean, you know, you've got the comedies, but you've got the, uh, you know, you've got a political thriller. Um, you've got a very deeply affecting film like October. You've got a big message movie like Pink. There's Piku, which is a film about relationships. I mean, uh, Shijit, can you talk a little about the process? I mean, how do you decide um, what you want to do next? I'm, I'm guessing that there are plenty of ideas floating around at any given time. Um, how do you decide what will be the next film? Um, and, and maybe Ronnie can then talk about, uh, you know, uh, uh, how, how that is executed. I mean, what are the first steps towards, towards sort of putting that together? Um, uh, Rajiv, that's uh, quite interesting, actually, you know. Uh, so what happens is, uh, yes, you are, you're right that there are many ideas which float around and which hits you. But you know, the foremost uh, thing that I look uh, into it, that if, if that idea steers me personally or not, uh, if that one line idea gives me, uh, changes me, challenges me or not, you know, can it take me to a, a little higher platform in terms of understanding life or, or not just for making a film? I mean, I am not too, I don't get too, um, you know, keen to make that film. So it's always been um, uh, like a lot of film, uh, I have people ask me why it's Gulab o Sita, why it's, I thought I never tried a satire in my life and you know, and when I uh, got the story and, and when I was working on it, and I, I, I just thought this, oh, this is very ordinary, this is very simple. Mm. And sometimes uh, to catch that ordinary, it needs a lot of uh, sometimes an understanding and knowledge also. Uh, mm. Lots of research, lots of reading, uh, because you know, films are all about human behaviors at the end of the day. Uh, anywhere you go, anywhere in the world, it's all about human behaviors. So I thought, why not to uh, pick up Gulabo Sita? But the similar, I am picking up the subjects which steers me. Otherwise, I sit yeah. on it. If it makes me um, move and you know do something. And also, I will also talk and thank Ronnie for believing and riding with me on my ideas. Uh, because mm -hmm. these are not very easy to convince a producer to do these films. Uh, it's, it's nice to talk after the film is done. But I think before the film is done, it's not easy to convince because you have to answer so much. So I have Ronnie, so I'm thankful that I don't have to worry and go anywhere else. Ronnie, what is that like? You know, when Shujit says, well, the next film is going to be about this father and daughter. And it's really just that. I mean, there's, because that's a hard one, right? Piku is hard to describe in a line. And this business, as we know, when you're pitching to, to, to producers and studios, you're really pitching a one line idea. I mean, how do you pitch an idea like Piku? How do you pitch an idea like Gulabo Sitabo? I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, what, what is, I mean, what have you learned in your years of producing that, uh, you know, that, that convinces you that you can do this? I mean, that it does, it's, it's hard to reduce it to one line, but, but we have something that we can, that people will be interested in watching and so we'll make it yeah i'll i'll come to the thing where we had a uh, long time back done an interview together you remember pink yeah so till yeah. that time i was i was in the same boat with uh, shridda where i had to convince the idea to a studio right. so so that was the difficult bit uh, now after pink we realized the freedom that we have is it's the uh, comfort level and it's the trust in a certain idea of what Shridha or what a Juhi or any of our writers are doing because we work with a very set people uh, kind of people and the kind of ideas always are very common uh, to us. So for me, yes, I mean, uh, Piku, I really enjoyed and uh, I would personally say it makes us more uh, on the toes because uh, it's very easy to make Wiki Donor 2, 3, 4 and be happy and you yes. just sleepwalk and you produce and you sleepwalk and you direct. But the challenge is when you're doing a Gulabo Sitabo, which is in Lucknow, a satire. Parallelly, you're doing Udham Singh, a biopic, which is a period film. So even as a producer, you are like all the time. One is in terms of how to mount the project. Second is how to execute. Both are challenging. It's not easy. So it's something like you've not done it ever before. So it keeps right. you always on the move. Otherwise, I mean, it's like you shoot a film in a studio every day. You feel no challenge. You're like, mm, it's a, let me go to office. So otherwise, I would have right. joined a nine to five kind of a job and do the same thing every day. 
so this is what yeah. filmmaking gives us is the challenge that you challenge yourself on a daily basis sure sure shujit what was the genesis of uh, gulabo sitabo i read i read many things there was um, i mean i read somewhere that juhi who's of course your regular collaborator as a writer um, y'all were in conversations y'all were talking about how to i mean uh, y'all were fascinated by by how the how an impoverished class lives i i also read somewhere that um, you know it, it the idea is in that traditional um, that that folk puppetry that that puppet show uh, street puppet <coughs> show what was the genesis uh so the genesis of this idea um, um of course came from uh, from juhi uh, about this uh, uh, this particular haveli and about this character mirza and uh, his uh, his wife begum uh, the basic story is that they are actually the trailer moves beyond the the film is beyond the trailer yeah. uh, and of course the uh, the haveli and the families who live there so i think uh, i i call this as a gulabo sitabo world you know uh, so i always i i just took my camera and i presented uh, this uh, uh, and 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 put my camera in every family's uh, uh, drawing room and we mm-hmm. just observe these families how they behave what they do in that particular situation what they do in that particular crisis so in a sense it's very ordinary rajiv it's so ordinary i can't tell you it's so simple i can't tell you um, yeah. and when you look back at life there are many things that we do and um, that's what my learning was while doing this film and while scripting this film that many foolish things that we do are when we look back are are actually foolish and then we smile at them um, so uh, and in terms of the gulabo sitabo that puppet art and i i've mm-hmm. clarified that uh, that came later when we made the film later on we found that there is a puppet art like this in gulabo sitabo uh, and which is a uh, so we just paid an ode to this puppet art and we used yeah. this as a metaphor to title the film so this is yeah. the basic way the genesis of this film you know shujit you it's it's interesting um, because you turned simple and ordinary into into very deeply moving films a film like iku <coughs> is 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 about a simple relationship and 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 then of course you you know extended to the road trip um, a film like october i mean it's the it's the simplest story of a of a boy waiting for a girl to come out of a coma um you know do you ever wonder and do you ever worry that even the, even the idea of of taking a simple story and ordinary that that does not become a formula i mean how do you make sure that um that that what is ordinary what is everyday that then does not become a formula because in in this industry in this business um and and you you know you've avoided formula you've avoided the sequels you've avoided the franchises um how how do you make sure that even that which has now become your um you know your your wheelhouse in a sense um the idea of telling simple stories about everyday people that one can relate to about a life that almost feels ordinary almost like nothing happens and yet we find great comfort in those worlds how do you make sure that that then does not become repetitive and a formula see various factors uh, in that so uh, comfort, <coughs> i think i think Uh, you are absolutely right that it's not should not become so simplistic and so uh, that you know it becomes a formula no uh, i think casting very very important who are the players who are playing the characters and who are uh, so that's very important um uh, for example mr bachchan uh, mr bachchan playing mirza uh, the way mm-hmm. he looks is uh, for me it's quite unbelievable you know the way he's transformed himself um okay. another is ayushman or the characters of begum or vijay varma you know um, uh, uh, so i think uh, uh, vijay raj sorry vijay varma yeah. uh, so i think all the, the one is the characterization yeah. uh, of course and and then secondly slowly how you uh, make sure that you take the people into that world sometimes you mm-hmm. see a film in with a lot of distance like for example a lot of foreign films when we see we we'll see with a lot of distance and some films we just go into it say for example Uh, when i was watching caper norm i was uh, in 10 minutes i was inside the film absolutely it, inside correct. it i absolutely correct. i was in that ghetto and in that in, i was with that boy and also yeah. that cameraman and the director did she did not show the city like madness she was with the boy she was just right. with the boy because she knew that okay now i have got the uh, audience hooked to the boy and i will just play with the boy it didn't matter what she showed even if she showed me one beautiful sunset shot sunlight shot didn't matter for me only that boy mattered that moment so i think uh, so i think i try i mean these are small yeah. references that i am putting 
I also try to be, once in 10 minutes I have established, I just try to be with the character so that I can engage mm -hmm. and take them to, to that world. Right. Ronnie, what was it like convincing Mr. Bachchan? <clears throat> I mean, was it, was, con was convincing required? I mean, that looks like a tough transformation. You know, the prosthetics, of course, that nose uh, uh, and that, that hunch. I mean, you know, at his age, um, to go through an entire film with that hunch, I mean, uh, I know he's, I know he has the, he has a childlike, you know, we all, it's legendary. I mean, his, his enthusiasm for, uh, you know, for trying something new and different and something that challenges him. But, but this is physically taxing. I mean, what was that like? Sort of, do you remember the first, mm -hmm. the first uh, meeting that you all took with him and, and, and when he kind of understood what it's going to require? Yeah. Uh, actually, as you said, his childlike enthusiasm, we didn't have to convince. We just uh, shared some looks and all. And he was like, I want to do this. And we were like, okay. uh, sir, we can avoid and uh, make it a little lesser because it's really hot. It's going to be really hot in uh, Lucknow, 45 degrees and so much of prosthetics. He was like, no, I want this look. I will. So we said, but it's going to be difficult. He's like, no, I, I don't care. I will do it. So right. then we said, okay, then can we, sir, shoot it in winters? He said, no, I want to shoot it in summers. I want, I like right. summers. So it's uh, more than difficult. I think it was, he himself was pushing us that go a little more try a little more rather than just being simplistic. So uh, it's hats off to him at this age. I mean, uh, and with that kind of condition, he is a dream to work with, honestly. Yeah. Shijit, could you no, have Ronnie, done this film Ronnie, if he... If he uh, yeah. No, I'm saying at yeah. his age, don't say that. Mr. Bachchan, if he hears, he'll get <laughs> yeah, yeah, pissed yeah. off. That's true. He's young. <laughs> at this young age, I meant. <laughs> at this young age. <laughs> But, but Shijit, could you have done this film? Um, I mean, who, do you sometimes think who would you make a film with if, the, if that actor didn't wasn't interested? I mean, who, who would have been the you know choice B if, if if Mr. B had said no, or for whatever reason he couldn't do it? See, we uh, may not have uh, uh, moved on uh, because uh, right. you're absolutely right. If if it was not Mr. Bachchan, wouldn't have agreed to the basic idea uh, when actually uh, Jui shared. Uh, so we wouldn't have moved on and written a complete script. We would have stopped then and there itself. Uh, because I don't think at this moment we could have uh, moved. We would have done later sometimes and created the script because idea was good and we wanted to retain this idea uh, uh, with some other actor. But immediately now we wouldn't have done it. It was just because right. he agreed on the first line itself, on the first two line concept and then we went on. And was Ayushman excited or a little bit intimidated when, when he realized that not only you're asking him to be in a film with Mr. Bachchan, you're asking him to be in a film with Mr. Bachchan where he's constantly meant to be, be bickering with him, where he's sort of meant to scream at him. And we've seen the trailer. They're constantly exchanging barbs. If Mr. Bachchan is giving it to him, he's giving it right back. Um, for some actors, younger actors, that might be a little bit scary, you know? Uh, yes, I think so. Um, I think it was. I mean, Aishman never showed it to me and uh, told me, but I could, I could gauge on the set that 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 was little. That nervousness was there for sure on the first few days, and and it's a it, it's natural in front. You if you're standing in front of Mr. Amitabh Bachchan, thinking whatever he was in Mirza. So I used to tell him that uh, I'll, I used to go to Aishman's ears and tell him he's not Mr. Bachchan, he's Mirza. You're talking to Mirza. You're talking to Mirza. So like that, you'll have to convince uh, Aishman. Uh, you know, but I think Mr. Bachchan is also, he knows sometimes that, you know, uh, he knows his aura also. But, you know, when he's on the set and in front of camera, I think he's, he's one of very good uh, co-actor. He's, he's, he's a fantastic co-actor. So I think Ayushman took little time, but slowly when he also, uh, because for him, Ayushman, uh, the only new person on the set was Amitabh Bachchan. That's it. Everyone was, right. otherwise he knew. It was an old right. uh, you know, family. Yeah. Uh, so, and for Mr. Bachchan also, he was the only, uh, you know, the fresh face there. So for both of them, right. it took a little time, but I think, um, but they had a ball later. It doesn't look like that. They, it looks like they have been bonding for years, you know, when you see the scenes. Ah, mm, okay. so, yeah. You know, so I think that's, a, that's quite, that's, I think, their talent. Bad. 
you know, Rani, you all were making Gulabu Sitabo, but but you also had Udham Singh. I mean, I think you all did you all wrap uh, Gulabu Sitabo and then go into Udham Singh, I believe. But pretty soon after, right? Um, what's that like for a producer, Rani, when you're uh, when you've got literally two projects at the same time and they couldn't be more different? Um, one is uh, you know being shot in Lucknow, the other you're shooting in parts in I think was it Russia? You're going off to London. I mean, um, you know, what is that? I mean, Shijit really throws you into the deep end, doesn't he? <coughs> Nothing comes easy with this man, clearly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I said. I mean, it's the challenge that we were looking for, but this was too much of a challenge. I mean, <laughs> we yeah. think of doing uh, different kinds of films, but at the same time, doing uh, two different films was. Uh, but uh, it was the situation uh, we had to. There were dates and issues and all that, so we had to do. And then we were like, instead of uh, moaning and crying about it, we said, let's take it head on. We've never done it, mm. but let's take it head on and do it. So I remember, I mean, uh, luckily for us, Udham Singh actually was supposed to start before Gulabo also, much before. Ah. So there was a lot of three years of production already done. It was just the final pre-production which had to be done. So while we started Gulabo, Sitabo in Lucknow, I think after 15-20 days, I went off for another 10 days to Europe and I was doing the entire uh, recce's and everything, the setting up of the teams and everything. So it was like a two different world for me. Like, And then suddenly I come back to the Gulabo set and I'm like, okay, where am I? Here I'm thinking of 1930s London and then suddenly here I am here, like sitting. So luckily for me, Gulabo Sitabo, as uh, in terms of production, was not uh, very uh, elaborate or difficult because, as we said, mm. the most important part was in the pre-production stage was to find that haveli, the right haveli, yeah. which luckily yeah. we got it. So after that, uh -huh. we were in that haveli only. So production-wise, it was not much. So it was more from a creative point of view. Sridha had to be really on the ball when Gulabo Sitabo was happening. For us, it was like okay. You set it up, uh, Gulabu Stabo, and we can go in for the uh, Udham. And luckily, we have two sets of team of my EPs. So I had a separate EP who was doing uh, the project uh, for Gulabu, and the other one was doing for Udham. So there was no uh, clash on that front. So it helped yeah. in that. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, to both of you, I want to ask. Um, when it, you know, when you all started the journey together, you all of course started with Vicky Donut. That was the first film that you all worked on together. Um, you know, you all were working with newcomers. It started with you know, y'all y'all were this y'all were the small company, this the, the, the small team that made this incredible film that that broke out. And and now of course you know you work with with stars. You work with Amitabh Bachchan. You work with uh, Vicky Kaushal while he's uh, at his peak. Aishman Purana. You work with Deepika. I mean, how do you maintain your um, integrity, your indie, almost your indie spirit uh, because you know one looks at the films and sees that it's not compromised and and the truth is and we can't deny this that that a lot of projects you know when stars come on to them they change i mean the the the, the reason for making them almost you know you can see has changed along the way um, that integrity sort of you know goes away how do you all maintain that and how do you all protect that uh, even when you're working with very big stars many of whom are quite opinionated and and you know control freaks sometimes <laughs> Ronnie, Ronnie, you answer. I'll answer later. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, see, uh, in this kind of a scenario, I think uh, the foremost thing is being uh, upfront and honest with the stars that this is the project. Right. And uh, I think uh, what we always say is the film is bigger than any of us in uh, this kind of a scenario. So it's always better to be uh, upfront and telling them that this is how we want to make the film and this is the way. So uh, I'm sure a lot of actors also appreciate the fact, but uh, see, if you are not very convinced on yourself and if somebody is op giving their opinions and then you start changing, then it uh, comes to a situation where, as you said, Rajiv, the project starts somewhere and ends somewhere else. Right. But if you are very clear of what kind of a film you want to make and you're very sure about it, then, I mean, there will be discussions. You, uh, It's a democratic kind of a scenario. You all have discussions. But then if you are very clear and uh, as everyone says, the director is the captain of the ship. And if he is very clear mm. what he wants, then it's uh, rather easier. And I would say for anybody who wants to do it is if you are clear what you want to do, it's better to tell the actors up front rather than yeah. cribbing behind that, oh, this is not my film which I was supposed to make. Rather... Uh, not do a film with him and do some other film later with him than right. uh, getting into it and then cribbing about it. So that's how 
um, i think we try to maintain our uh, kind of films that we want to make you know shujit has this uh, big smile uh, throughout so, your answer i feel like he uh, he's he's thinking his mind is going back to those instances where perhaps uh, you know there have been um, the sort of you know times when you have to put actors in their place shujit uh, what is the reason for this big smile this very no, I just wanted smile. To, no, yeah so there are three four factors to it huh? okay. uh, so quickly i'll i'll, I'll show that you know yes. uh, the, uh, of course one factor is uh, once me and ronnie have agreed upon uh, that what we are doing uh, uh, mm -hmm. there is no question then i think we are on board so now so that's the first and of course second is uh, an actors uh, most important and especially from our industry so my first mantra to the actor when i go and present it to him first thing is this is not entertainment 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 so you be clear about it. <laughs> so so first no this is not so first i get this out of my way mm. so if i can get this out of my way my path seems clear now you agree okay. to work with me or not you want to agree so this is second one and yeah. third this cinema this particular film will try to explain it to you will try to this is absolutely my film i know the characters more than anybody else i have lived the characters so this second mm. part of the my third discussion is this fourth okay. uh, which okay. is uh, uh, which is very important that i try to tell them when when i when i am on the set that this film i am not going to play to the gallery so that's the performance brief so these are the four okay. factors which i clearly uh, are my uh, Uh, my or uh, what i discuss with the actors once i've achieved this i know what uh, once i i know these are things i i don't have to do then rest is a then rest is uh, not a problem to do because then you then you work research you enjoy your creative process but i get these yeah. four things out of my way out of the way i want to ask you shujit and i'm not going to ask you for names we don't want to gossip here but i want to ask you have have there been times when you've had to kind of have a chat during the making or you know um kind of remind them why they signed up for this film an actor an actress um you know because the the structure of the film business is such unfortunately i mean um you know traditionally for too long stars have been made to feel like they're the most important voice on a film set which which is completely not how it should be because that's the that's almost a sure shot formula of the film not turning out the way it was meant to be have you had moments of conflict have you had moments where you've had to have a chat and kind of remind them that listen we committed to doing this this way uh, yes uh, with many actors uh, you have to do and you have to constantly remind them because see uh, they have an influence of the outside world Correct. and for me uh, it's not uh, my fee, my fee, uh, for me my world is the script and my film for example mm. so they are influenced by the outside world i am also but i have tried to cover myself and keep myself i have guarded myself for now so many years uh, and i have practiced it quite well now uh, so uh, but for them as they are exposed to the outside world you are absolutely right you have to constantly remind them uh, like a lesson like an everyday lesson that why we are doing this film you know i know that we've got about 75 um, fans who are online and they they've got they've got lots of questions but before i open it out to them i want to ask you a you know couple more um so did you just a few weeks ago we lost irfan and um and and irfan was so wonderful in in piku he was of course a friend of yours um ronnie both of you i mean uh, this was an actor you all you all did such incredible work with uh was that was you know how do you look back at your i mean what are the memories what is your enduring memory of irfan um you know when you when you think of him i mean it's almost hard to believe that this incredible man with so much life and such an incredible actor is just not 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 amidst us anymore and i know she did you were very close to him even as a friend i mean apart from a director actor relationship you all were very close you were in touch with him for the last two years while he was recovering um was that was it just very hard to to come to terms with uh, yes irfan khan i mean i, I cannot um, I, i i can't still uh, forget about him you know i i, I told a few days back someone that you know i was telling my wife that he constantly comes in front so it's very um uh, you know i i i was trying desperately to take him out of my head and that he's no more mm. but he keeps coming in and also especially in the last few years of his recovery 
um, when we were discussing um, uh, generally, you know, many things that we have discussed, we came quite close also. Uh, mm -hmm. he, uh, he and me opened up a lot about his, whatever his treatment was going on, uh, generally about life. So, um, uh, and then, uh, and then this happens, you know, in the last, and especially after the lockdown last 10 days of his, when he was in the hospital uh, in Mumbai and I was in Kolkata. So I was mm -hmm. just, I could not be in, in, in near him. So that was also a disappointment. And, um, Yes, I mean, he fought, I, as I said, it was a difficult tweet for me to tweet that he's no more. He fought, yeah. fought and really fought. And there is a guilt in me, let me tell you frankly. Uh, mm -hmm. I've never uh, told anyone there is a guilt that, you know, we, we could not, you know, bring him back possibly. So, yeah, he will always, he, he's a big loss to the industry. He's the re real loss uh, to all the filmmakers. I think everybody took this as a personal loss. Yeah, yeah. Ronnie, do you have an enduring memory of, of, of Irfan? Yeah, I mean, uh, as Sridhar was saying that I never saw him after, after Piku, I never saw him as Irfan Khan, the actor. He was more like yeah. a real friend, a real a normal person. Like uh, I remember uh, sitting in my office and we are talking about how the prices of onions are going up to all that. And it's not like uh, generally how stars talk. So it's that level about education of the children because my uh, his son was going in for certain kind of education and so we were discussing because my daughter is studying now in new york so we've been discussing so it's always been about these kind of small matters ordinary things it was never those yeah. big things that oh let's go to Cannes or let's go make film like that those are the cliched conversations but with him yeah. the best was that we always had the most ordinary most regular kind of conversations about life so i mean yeah. That is something which I'll definitely miss with any actor. So really, thank you so much, Ronnie. Thank you, uh, Shudit, for, for your extraordinary films. All the best, of course, for Gulabu Sitabo. I want to say thank you to everyone who's been watching. But I'm going to pass this on thank for the you. final sign-off to, to the festival director of um, the Indian Film Festival of Melbourne. Neetu Bhamik Longe will, will um, give us sign-off. And hopefully, Shudit and Ronnie, we'll see you all next year at the festival in Melbourne. Um, with, with You'll have hopefully two films out, uh, you know, before. I mean, there'll be Gulabu Sitabo and hopefully... Uddham Singh will also be out in, by, by, you know, by 2021 when the festival comes up. Um, I'm going to pass on to Meetu, over to you. Uh, uh, thank you, Rajiv. Thank you so much for your time and doing, bringing so much warmth into this, uh, our very first film club. And um, I'm personally so uh, appreciative of Shujita and Ronnie. You have a film uh, dropping day after tomorrow and you still took so much time, answered all our questions so patiently. So really appreciative. I mean, we had made big plans of uh, being together in August and celebrating your film. But I think this is, a good way, uh, given everything. And uh, please keep August 2021 free. <laughs> Can't get rid of us so easily. Um, and lots of love and good luck. And I want to thank everybody who's taken part today in our first film club for your time and your wonderful questions. And um, to all the aspiring writers and directors uh, from your questions, we do have the filmmaking workshop coming up where you have an opportunity to work with uh, filmmakers like Onir, Reema Das, uh, Imtiaz Ali and Kabir Khan. So just go to our website, iffm.com.au and see the details. Um, hopefully one year, Shujita and Ronnie will also be there. So um, you never know. And um, Shujita, Ronnie, Rajiv, thank you so much on behalf of the festival and all of us film lovers who are in another continent, but who love you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank, bye, bye, thank, bye, bye. thank you. Bye.